the Reedy Set Grow podcast with Trish Reedy. Welcome to Reedy Set Grow, the podcast that inspires you to grow into the person you are meant to be. I'm your host, Trish Reedy, and I am a local mortgage lender, clearly a newbie podcaster as I hit the microphone. But I am excited today to share the story of a local Kansas Cityan who survived something that only 5% of the world survives. And we've got uh, his lifesaver here too, which is pretty cool. So my friend, Tim Mesger, uh, we know each other from our triathlon days. Mm -hmm. You've been in great shape for at least the past 15 years, long as I've known you. And you survived a Widowmaker heart attack. Yeah. Uh, uh, to this day, that's what, two and a half years later, I'm just amazed. Um, you know, it, uh, I, I, I've thought about this a number of days. Every, every day I wake up at least once throughout the day, I do remember and I appreciate that, hey, I'm breathing air right now with my kids wow. and having a great life. So Yeah. Um, and Detective Jesse Ryman with the Leewood me. Police Department. Oh, yeah. Right So here. fancy detective. Oh. Um, so the day that this happened, you were on patrol. Yep, I Leland. was I was uh, assigned patrol duty that day. Uh, normally assigned to the traffic department, but um, that day we were covering the streets. So usually I was happy to be on a motorcycle, but that day I was riding around in four wheels. So um, I was at the station, and uh, we they took a call. Uh, dispatch put out a party down on the trail um, at the South Greenway, so just to the southeast of uh, our station. So. Um, one of the other officers, uh, Matt Schrader, he got there initially and uh, he was approached, I think, by a, a lady that said she was a doctor and led him down to Tim and said that uh, she wasn't sure if he was breathing, um, thought he had a pulse. And uh, Matt got there, looked at you and said, oh, no, because you were lacking color. You were in. A, oh, wow. Yeah. He was looking gray. So Matt checked for pulse, no pulse, and uh, immediately started doing CPR. So um, I believe another officer was kind of in the area, a detective, and he made his way into the area, but uh, I started responding from the station. Um, normally with something like that, the fire station is sure. just a few blocks away too. So, you know, it, it's like, those guys will be there. They do this stuff a little just more make it that, often that than long. us. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I got there and uh, found Matt. Matt was soaked in sweat. You were still in that totally gray, ashen color. And uh, I was like, oh, man. So um, I looked at Matt and uh, I was like, you ready to swap out? And he's like, oh, yeah. yeah. So um, I started pumping on your chest. And I can't remember if we swapped out at all during that time. We may have. may have. I couldn't, couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But uh um, I just remember pumping and pumping. And then finally, uh, I felt the rise and fall of your chest and I'd done CPR plenty of times in the, you know, since sure. 2006 when I started, right. um, had one time where it worked, but I mean, that time I think it was cause the guy was just, they were pumping a guy full of drugs and I never felt any change, but, uh, mm -hmm. I remember pumping on that guy until we got over to St. Joe, but with you, pumping and pumping you're sitting there going man where's the fire guys at? you know right. and they've got more equipment than us we're just a couple of chuckleheads over here pumping away so um i felt that rise and fall and i was just like kind of taken aback and uh because it was just so strange it just it just it was it was like oh my god this is something just chat something good just happened. something changed and so it was kind of a you know i can't remember somebody there just said just keep pumping you know yeah. so um kept pumping and Felt another breath, uh, but I mean, they were super spaced out, Yeah. but I uh, just kept going and wow. um, kept pumping, kept pumping. And it seemed like the, the rise and fall was starting to, the breaths were starting to get a little closer together and started seeing some color come back to you. And uh, the fire guys got there. And I think that the station two fire guys that are over at 127th and Mission, I think that they were down further away. They were gone on a call or they were out on training, so we had to wait for somebody to respond from somewhere else, or they wow. responded from somewhere else. So it was... What's it feel like? Because, I mean, to really actually do CPR the right way, you have to push oh, really yeah. hard. Oh, yeah. And I was going to gonna say, um, a lot of the time when you're doing it, it's on somebody that's 60 plus, usually, you know, somebody that's in their 80s, and they have tons of ailments and stuff like that, and you're, didn't, you know, you're pumping, and you can feel cartilage and ribs and all kinds of... Wow. bad sounds and you're always sitting there like 
pop it and you're just sitting there thinking in your head, I'm trying to help you, you know, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But um, no, uh, it, it, it feels so wrong yeah. because you're, you know, I mean, you're going inches deep while you're, wow. you're pushing. And um, I'm sitting there always thinking, God, this guy wakes up, he's going to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully he wakes up. And I right? did. Yeah, and exactly. I did. Oh, I'll I bet, did. Dude, I'll bet it hurt like hell. Yeah. But um, I just, I just remember... Uh, when, when we got done and when fire got there and they start hooking everything up and, um, and loaded you up and they were moving with a sense of urgency. And, uh, I remember looking at Matt, I was like, I think this guy's going to make it, you know? And you, a lot yeah. of the time it's just like, you, well, and so often you don't get to know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, I mean, and a lot of the times, I mean, not knocking CPR, but a lot of the times, like I said, you're doing it on somebody that's got right. lots of, lots of ailments they're on their way out. But you know, mm -hmm. you look at this guy, it's like, he's young. He's clearly an athlete. He's got a lot of things going for him. And then, you know, uh, we went to the hospital, you know, mm -hmm. right after that, you know, followed the ambulance there or went just a few minutes later and your wife got there pretty quick. I think Matt called her on the phone. One of us did. And, uh, she was incredibly calm, Yeah. but I think it was probably just a total shock to her. Sure. You know, and she's you know telling us you're a triathlete, this and that, and it's just like, what? oh man. I can just Doesn't... hear April being like, "This is this, you this must have the speech. wrong Tim." Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh no, she was so calm, so calm, oh. and, and she's like, "Okay, well, okay, I've, I've got to, I've got to call, I've got to do this, I've got to do that." She's going down the, the checklist of what oh, she right. needs to do. That's the way she works. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it all hit her hard afterward. So yeah. Tim, what do you remember? A lot better day than that, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, I. Don't remember a lot. I learned from a cardiologist that, you know, with the LAD, a widowmaker, um, that you don't have a lot of memory prior to. So, wow. um, you know, over the, the months, I started piecing some together. On that day, just like any other run at lunchtime on a Monday, um, I do recall, you know, whether it was that run, because all the runs run together, that right. I did have some like, you know, minor minor chest pains, the kind that, you know, um, what, I forget there's a name for them, but like when you breathe in it, it's a little bit uncomfortable and mm -hmm. then you just breathe through and it's done. So I, I remember at least two runs where that would happen. And within the first mile I'd warm up, it went away. Right. You know, no concerns. I mean, I'm, <laughs> nothing to yeah, I just about. needed to warm up. Um, that day, um, like Jesse said, I, I just, I collapsed in front of the Leewood police department. How lucky could that be to be, you know, right, right. there with the first responders? Um, besides a few hallucinations, maybe some visions, um, <laughs> you know, I woke up to my family about what, I think 10 days later, wow. um, everything that, you know, I, the story that I have to tell is all from my wife, my friends, um, uh, that were there. Um, when I got put in the hospital, it was a cardiac arrest. I was, my heart was beating and they did a code freeze because they don't know how long I was without oxygen. So code freeze is to bring down your body temperature. So your, you know, your brain can, um, um, you know, minimize the damage. That you so can a code have. freeze, does that sound like what it, is that is what it sounds I, like? I didn't know until I woke, I woke up and I heard that. I was like telling all my friends, I was like, do you realize they freeze me? This is about science. Say, they put you on ice? Yeah. This is science fiction. Wow. wow. Um, and then I guess I forget the part whether I was warm, was cooling down or warming back up. My heart stopped again. Um, and then, you know, so now you've died twice, yes. essentially. Yeah. Wow. And then had I, nothing to do with the second. <laughs> throughout some tests, they figured out that, um, it was my LAD. And, mm -hmm. you know, the doctors uh, at the end of it, they're just, I think everybody was amazed. And everybody that's in the field of medicine, they've told me that I'm a, um, a miracle wow. you know, for surviving this. I guess in the hospital, when you, when you have a, um, you know, widowmaker, like just even in the hospital, your percent, percent chances of surviving is less than 5%. Wow. So, um, yeah, other than that, I, you know, I have some weird visions that I had, um, some things like, um, Remember seeing like a, a little little guy with like um, you know bulldog under under teeth, and he was in the lobby of the hospital. So I don't know if they were moving me where I was, wow. but it was a vision of consciences. And I just remember I did not like that guy. It was like, it was a mm. devil or was it a demon? But everybody liked him. They were walking by and they're like, and he say in a real high pitched voice, "How you doing?" It's kind of like a Walmart greeter or something. Yeah, wow. But for some reason, he just rubbed me the wrong way, and I I don't know where to this day what that meant or what it was. If it's just hallucinations, but. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, man. But. So it's not very often, at least that you, that you hear of that a first responder gets to save someone's life and follow up on it mm -hmm. and get to know each other a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really cool because you guys are both friends of mine in different parts of my life completely. Mm -hmm. And yet this miracle brought you together. 
So yeah, afterwards, um, like I said, there's it, 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 this event did change my life. When I came back, um, I was like, you've got a second shot. And right. to this day, I still, at least once a day, it crosses my mind. Um, you know, I think it was around the holidays where I was like, it was my birthday. And I thought, I need to get these guys something. I need to make sure that they know. We had met, you know, prior to, mm -hmm. I was, actually, I'll tell that story first. I reached out to the Leewood Police Department and the chief, I think I was just, uh, trying to find the woman who he still haven't been able to identify. I call her my guardian angel that saw me, first reported right. me on the trail. And then there was a, a guy named Forrest on a bike that actually called 911. And then these guys showed up. Um, so the chief is like, you know, I'd like to, uh, you know, have you in and, you know, meet the, your first responders. I was like, that's a great idea. I want, I, I want them to know uh, my appreciation that, you know, I've got a seven-year-old and a four-year-old right now that I'm still here for my family. And these are the guys that, that saved me and uh, allowed me to do so. So uh, we had a little get together, met with them, police department, um, fire department, EMT guys, even the first, the 911. Um, um, yeah. Operators. Cool, yeah. cool. And so, yeah, we just had a little sit together and they told their story. I told mine and, uh, you know, took a few pictures. And so that was really cool. And then, like I said, around the holidays, um, I felt, you know, I, I had to, you know, get them holiday yeah. cards are going out. So right. I yeah. went to the department and, and dropped them off. And later that day, it was actually my birthday. Jesse stopped by. He's like, hey, I got your card. We just wanted to say hi. And I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I was just out riding on the motorcycle. I was like. I might have just been working that neighborhood. I was like, you know what? I'm going to run by there. And I'd ridden by there before. And I was just like, eh, you know, he's probably busy, whatever. I was just like, ah, screw it. I'll knock. And sure enough. I imagine you probably have an open door whenever you want to come over. Oh, I, I think mean, so. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. want to be a bother to the guy, <laughs> you know. Now that I see a, a police motorcycle out there, I was like, what did I do? I <laughs> oh, April, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Darn hit and run crash. Oh, no. man. Man, well, that's so inspiring. I mean, to essentially be Lazarus, you died a couple times. They brought you back. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell me a little bit about what's changed in your life and your mindset since then. So, you know, a lot, actually. I mean, you know, good and the bad. The really good was, you know, prior to that event, um, you know, when we had kids, it's, you know, I was always independent trying, you know, trying or uh, training for marathons and triathlons right. and always had a focus and a goal, you know, something to always go after with kids. They just kind of set me off my game a little bit. Um, it was just more Changes word. your world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, same with my, my professional career, just, you know, put a little hurdle in it. And I don't think I took those changes, um, as well as I could have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, went down, you know, the path, you know, drinking in the evenings instead of, you know, going for a run. Um, and I didn't like it. And to the point that, um, when I was in the hospital, they actually had to wean me off. There was a point that, you know, they asked my wife, um, you know, does, does he drink? And she's like, yeah, you know, in the evenings he does. Well, it, I drink enough that, you know, I was weaning off in the hospital. Mm, so they had wow. to take care of that. So when I, you know, came to in the hospital, um, immediately I knew I had a second chance. I was yeah. like, you need to take control, um, of your life. And since then, like, you know, for that first a year, at least a year and a half to two years, every day I'd wake up and I'd, I remember the first thought in my head, you've got a second chance today. And I was wow. exercising. I was taking care of myself. I was a better father to my kids. Yeah. Um, and I was enjoying it. I, I appreciated it. I know they did, um, or they do. And so from here on out, yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, I got a second chance and I never, I never forget it. Yeah. Does it change your perspective on what you do at all? Getting to see, I mean, you really saved a life. Yeah. Literally. Um, literally it's, it's just, like I said, you know, it's, it, it's so amazing. It's, it's a great feeling when it actually works. And, and, you know, like I say, you were what, 40 at that time? 39. 39. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me and Matt were looking at each other because I was like, just like a couple of years younger than you at the time. Like, dude, we're running on borrowed time, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it just, you look at it and it's like, this stuff can happen to anybody. I remember, um, a couple months later, I pulled a guy over on a motor, I was on the motorcycle and there's a gal, you know, my age driving, and I look in the back seat, and there's a guy, you know, in his late 30s in the, pa in the back seat with a big heart pillow. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, looking at this situation, I'm like, this is different. But um, I asked him, like, hey, what's, what's, uh, what's, he's like, I'm like, what's up with the situation here? And uh, he's like, oh, I had a heart attack. And I was like, was it the widow maker? And he's like, how'd you know? And it's just, uh -huh. you know, you start finding out that this stuff hits guys yeah. that are young. 
Yeah. That's way too young. We had way a, too young. one of our um, retired detectives. I think he was probably in his late forties and he was the same way. Big time runner, big time athlete. Great. You know, eight right fit. Did he had one and he lived through it. Wow. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it hits and it hits quick. And the guy that I talked to uh, that had the pillow, he was, he was like at a doctor's office and he was described the kind of the same way he was having a series of just kind of some chest pains going and went to the doctor to get it looked at and dropped dead there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it, it's just, uh, it makes you appreciate life uh, uh, quite a bit because yeah. it just, you know, but you sit there at the same time, gives you a little anxiety because I'll, I'll be sitting there watching TV at night with the wife and, um, I'll think about you. <laughs> it, it pops into my head all the time. I'm like, man, this this could happen at any time. And I try to take care of myself. Yeah, you know, I work out every day and all that. And I was like, God, no matter what. I asked my cardiologist, who I see once a year now, and I was like, what What could I have done different? He said, nothing. It's like yeah. it's like an aneurysm. He goes, strike of the lightning. It could happen to anybody. And it's just it's just where the you know yeah I, I have a history of heart disease in the family, but my blood pressure and cholesterol has always been in check hmm. just because of my lifestyle and. A, you know, the bad luck is it just all collected on that uh, that LAD mm -hmm. artery, which is one of the three main arteries in your heart. And it just, when it stops, I ran into another doctor, a friend, a friend of mine's dad. He's like, it's a perfect way to die. It just shuts <laughs> yeah. off the circulation of your yeah. brain and you're gone. Yeah. I mean, he was, you were probably dead before you hit the ground. Yep. And wow. Yeah. It was, he was, he was dead. And I feel no bad. Doubt. I did some cardiac rehab and you mentioned the pillow that, that yeah, the yeah. guy had. Well, they, they hold that because he probably had chest surgery. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you laugh, sneeze, or cough, oh. it is excruciating. And I can't imagine how excruciating it is for them. I just had, you know, the CPR. So mm -hmm. whatever, you know, the rib heads were detached from my sternum. Um, I would sneeze, and it's just like oh. for about 10 oh, seconds. God. It's just how excruciating. Oh, yeah. So I felt I was in cardiac mm -hmm. rehab. And I remember there's mostly older people in there. That was, you know, I'm doing the bike with, yep. so, you know, with 80 year olds. Yeah. Like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for six You're months. like, get those RPMs up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When are we going to do the water aerobics? Yeah. Still coming from my background. <laughs> right. I would be on the treadmill and they're just like, you need to slow down. I'm like, I'm not even working here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just the warm up. I had right. one one nurse that she'd come up to me at least once a day. She'd just like, I'm just checking on you. I'm like, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. <laughs> But because I wanted, I was like in workout mode. I wanted to yeah. push it a little bit. And right. They, they said, nope, you can't get your heart rate up. Wow. But there was a girl, um, a younger girl that came in towards the end of my cardiac rehab. And I could tell she had the, the, the surgery because I remember she was one of her first days. They're connecting her to the electrodes to work out. And she had a quick sneeze. And the next thing I know, tears are running down oh. her face. I was like, oh, that's Man. rough. Man. But, yeah. What an inspiring story. I think I think it's so cool. I'm so glad you guys are our friends. And I'm so glad you came to share the story and inspire everybody else. Um, I want to end with just a couple rapid fire questions. Mm -hmm. So whichever one of you wants to answer these. Um, <laughs> Jesse's like, oh. yeah, All right. What's your favorite quote? <sighs> um, you know, from Braveheart, not every man, every man dies, but not every man really lives. So, and then I was thinking on the drive over here, I was like, yeah, not, not every man dies twice either. So, <laughs> there you go. Like, That's but now you get to really live. Yeah. Exactly. Right. That's great. Um, all right. You're going out. You got to go catch the bad guy. You know, it's going to be that kind of day. What song are you listening to to pump you up, Jesse? Oh my God. Anything eighties. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm solid eighties and I'm not talking like hair band eighties. <laughs> I'm talking like the fix or some B-52s or Ooh, something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm taking you back. I'm I having a it. good time. So I, I couldn't, it. I couldn't narrow it down to yeah. one specific song okay, from that fair. era. Maybe that's some fair. Huey Lewis. I don't know. And the news. Yeah. Things are going to get crazy. <laughs> I love it. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Either one of you. For me, probably completing the Ironman. It's been years ago, but still that's uh, something they never can take away. Yeah, that's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're in the club. Right there. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, what two things are on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list that you haven't checked off yet? Man, it's going to take some time. Um, I'll probably have to be retired by the time I can. Just go on a nice motorcycle tour of the country. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, That'd be great. That's one of them. I don't know what the other one's going to be. For me, um, because I can't really get, I can't race again, like, you know, the intensity that I could, to just be able to, you know, work up to do maybe another marathon again. Um, yeah. And then, you know, take our kids to Disney World. I want to go on a, we haven't done a vacation with them to where, you know, they get to right. enjoy us as a family on vacation. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that too. Post pandemic. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's exactly. coming. It's coming. All right. Finish the sentence. I am most inspired by Patrick Mahomes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, man. What's your inspiration, Jesse? 
I can't complete that. I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, um, my background's in the military. Um, I get really inspired by, you know, reading any, like really just, uh, some of the stories of survival, you yeah. know, um, uh, from war and, uh, or just, you know, even law enforcement stories of survival or just, you know, I'm watching a show on, uh, uh, somebody getting, you know, like the I survived show, yeah. um, that you see on A and E or whatever, where, you know, I mean, the, the lengths that people will go to, to, uh, get through stuff that you'd think nobody could make it through, you know, out there all alone by themselves and somehow yeah. getting through. It's, that's I the, mean, Tim's kind of a perfect example yeah, of that. Yeah. In the wild woods of the Tomahawk Creek trail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, coyotes running everywhere. <laughs> right. The occasional, deer. uh, deer. Oh yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, glad um, to do it. Thank you guys for tuning in to Reedy Set Grow. I'm Trish Reedy. So glad that you are here. And thank you again for sharing your story. Thank you for glad to do it. Thank you. The Reedy Set Grow Podcast with Trish Reedy.